Have you ever spotted a sea turtle swimming gently through the ocean? They are incredible marine animals specifically adapted to live in the ocean. But how long can they hold their breath? And how deep can they dive? And how many different types of sea turtle are there? Let's find out together in this episode all about sea turtles. Sea turtles are reptiles, which means they require air to breathe and land to lay their eggs. However, the majority of their lives are spent underwater. Sea turtles belong to the order Testudines, which includes all turtles, tortoises, and terrapins. Today, there are seven species of sea turtles in existence. Six species belong to the hard-shelled family, and one is in its own separate family, the leathery-shelled family. The smallest sea turtles are about the size of a beach ball while the largest species can reach sizes closer to a golf cart. Let's take a quick look at all of the different species of sea turtle, starting with the hard-shelled species. First up is the green sea turtle, the largest of all the hard-shelled turtles, weighing up to 250 to 350 pounds. Their shell can grow up to two and a half to four and a half feet long. Adult green sea turtles are the only herbivorous sea turtle. They graze on marine plants and their diet turns their body fat green, which is where the green sea turtle gets its name. Their specialized diet means that they are the only species with serrated jaws. These serrations are used like hedge clippers and help the turtles tear and eat marine plants. Next up, is the most common sea turtle in the United States, the loggerhead. These sea turtles get their name from their huge heads that seem out of proportion to the rest of their body, which seems rude to point out. This species can have shell lengths of 2.3 to 3.6 feet and can weigh up to 230 to 350 pounds. Adults have strong, large jaws that they use to crush shellfish. Their favorite food. Then there is the hawksbill sea turtle. This turtle gets its name from the shape of its hooked hawk-like beak. This species can be found in tropical and subtropical waters throughout the world, but in very low numbers. Adults prefer to hang out near coral reefs, looking for their favorite meal, sponges. Hawksbills are smaller than both the green and loggerhead species, weighing up to 100 to 125 pounds, and they have shells that can reach up to two and a half to three feet in length. The olive ridley is the most common sea turtle in the world's oceans and gets its name from the color of its shell. It's a comparatively small sea turtle weighing only about 85 pounds with a shell two to two and a half feet in length. Olive Ridleys spend most of their time in the open ocean, feeding at the surface, but they are also known to dive to depths over 600 feet in search of food. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle is named for Richard Kemp, a fisherman who helped to discover and describe the species. Kemp's Ridley is the least common sea turtle species in the world's ocean, with only about 2,500 nesting females, and the only sea turtle to regularly nest mostly in the daytime, with shells about two feet long, and they weigh from 70 to 100 pounds. The flatback is our last hard-shelled sea turtle. This species is named for its distinctive flat shell. I know, creative. This sea turtle spends its life in the waters off of Australia and Papua New Guinea. They eat corals, shrimp, sponges, and other soft prey. This sea turtle can weigh up to 200 pounds and its shell can be two and a half to just over three feet long. The leathery shelled sea turtle family contains only one living species, the leatherback sea turtle, the largest species. These sea turtles can grow as long as six and a half feet and weigh 1,500 pounds. These sea turtles are unique in two ways. First, they have a thick, leathery outer covering instead of a hard bony shell, and they can survive in colder waters. Their shell is streamlined with seven prominent ridges called keels that run from head to tail. This type of shell 
along with flexible flippers that are quite long in relation to the rest of their body, help to power them rapidly through the water, allowing them to execute deep dives of over a thousand feet. Their jaws are too weak to crunch hard-bodied prey, so they mostly eat jellyfish. Sea turtles are well adapted to live in the open ocean, and their most distinctive feature is their shell. Unlike freshwater turtles, the sea turtle cannot retract their head and limbs into their shell. Their body shape is more hydrodynamic than freshwater turtles, allowing them to maneuver easily through the open ocean. A sea turtle shell doesn't just help them glide through the ocean, it serves as protective armor. Armor that they can't take off. The top of the shell is called the carapace, and the bottom is called the plastron. The carapace and plastron consist of two layers. The first layer is flattened bone plates that fuse with the ribs as the turtle grows, and the second layer is the keratin scales, or scutes, that protect the sea turtle and prevent water loss. Sea turtles aren't known for their speed. They can be found typically cruising at a leisurely one to five miles per hour. But if they are spooked or trying to escape a potential threat, most sea turtles can book it at 20 miles per hour. Their long flippers help them efficiently propel their bodies through the water. You can see here how different their flippers are from the webbed feet of freshwater turtles. Their front flippers are like paddles, powering them through the water, while the smaller back flippers are like rudders, steering them in the direction they're trying to go. One of the most impressive abilities held by sea turtles is their ability to hold their breath for extended amounts of time, like a long time. Remember, sea turtles need to breathe air, which is tricky if you're spending your whole life in and underwater. Sea turtles can hold their breath for an impressive four to seven hours when resting. Hours, not minutes. While holding their breath to conserve oxygen, their heart rate slows significantly. Minutes can pass between heartbeats. Their breath holding ability allows them to dive deep in the ocean to find food. The maximum depth ever recorded for a sea turtle dive was a leatherback that dove 3,937 feet underwater. Leatherbacks are able to do this because of their adaptations for deep diving. We already know they have a different type of shell, but it's much more than that. Leatherbacks have collapsible lungs that allow them to compress themselves while diving to deal with the pressure change as they continue to dive deeper underwater. Reptiles are ectothermic, meaning they rely on the environment to regulate their body temperature. Sea turtles are no exception. As you travel deeper underwater, the temperature gets significantly colder. Leatherbacks are able to keep their bodies warm through countercurrent heat exchange. Warm blood traveling from the heart in their inner bodies travels out to their extremities, right next to the cold blood returning back inwards to the heart. The two blood temperatures travel so close to one another that the cold blood is warmed before re-entering the body core. Pretty cool. A salty environment is not easy to live in. If sea turtles had a salt concentration inside their body that matched the ocean water outside, they would die. Which is a problem, because when a sea turtle is having a nice jellyfish snack, they ingest a ton of salty seawater. So how do they handle the extra salt? Sea turtles have large glands in their eyes that release the extra salt. Think of it like very salty tears. If you're still here liking this video, let us know. And hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Most sea turtles nest in one specific area and then make massive migrations in the years in between to find food. Loggerheads that nest along Florida's coast and in the Caribbean Sea follow the warm Gulf Stream along the eastern United States coast north during the summer months. Many find their way into the nutritious waters off of the coast of Maine or even cross the Atlantic to Europe. Once the water gets too cold, near the end of October into November, loggerheads follow the Atlantic Ocean currents back south to the warm waters of the Caribbean. After a long migration back to their home beach, the same beach they hatched from, female sea turtles come ashore mostly at night during nesting season to lay clutches of eggs. It takes a ton of physical effort for the female to make her way up the beach using her flippers. She isn't used to dealing with moving around on land. Once she's above the high tide mark, the female will dig an egg chamber. She lays eggs in batches of two to three at a time. 
each egg about the size of a ping pong ball with a soft, leathery shell. After all the eggs are laid, the hole is filled in with the hind flippers and the sand is packed down. Finally, to camouflage the nest, the mother sea turtle tosses sand backwards with her front flippers and swings her hind flippers from side to side like windshield wipers before making the long trip back down the beach to the sea. These sea turtle eggs develop over a period of about two months and undergo temperature-dependent sex determination. This just means that the temperature of each egg during certain periods of development determines the gender of the baby sea turtle that hatches. Warmer eggs produce females, while cooler eggs tend to produce males. The hatchlings break their way out of their eggs by using a temporary sharp egg tooth that is specifically adapted for this purpose. This tooth-like structure soon falls off after hatching. The babies usually wait until nightfall before emerging in order to avoid both daytime predators and heat exhaustion. Sea turtles are phototactic, which means that they are attracted to light. Hatchlings will use the moonlight reflecting off the sea to move toward the ocean. Six out of seven sea turtle species are listed as either vulnerable to extinction, endangered, or critically endangered. And for the seventh, the flatback, there isn't enough information to determine its population status. Habitat encroachment and degradation, accidental capture in commercial fisheries, injuries due to boat strikes are just some of the hazards that sea turtles face. A developed beach often has many barriers to nesting females. Physical barriers like seawalls, jetties, and sandbag structures aimed at preventing beach erosion can block nesting sea turtles from nesting above the high tide line, which leaves the nest vulnerable to flooding. Conservation efforts have protected many important nesting areas. Fisheries not specifically targeting sea turtles also play a major role in their dwindling populations. The leading cause of sea turtle death in the past 50 years has been commercial fisheries by catch, the unintentional capture of untargeted marine species. So sea turtles are caught by accident. If a sea turtle becomes entangled in a net or fishing line or on a hook meant for fish or shrimp and is unable to reach the surface, it's at risk of drowning. Juveniles and adults may die after consuming discarded plastic bags, balloons, and other marine debris, mistaking trash for their favorite jellyfish snack because they look so similar. No area of the ocean is unaffected by the over 300 million metric tons of plastic produced every year on Earth. We can change things. One way humans can help injured or sick sea turtles is through sea turtle hospitals, like the Loggerhead Marine Life Center in Juneau Beach, Florida. Specialized hospitals like this have been established along coastlines in order to care for found injured or sick sea turtles while educating the public. Their goal is to eventually release the turtles back into the wild. There is a link somewhere down in the description with more information and ways you can support sea turtle hospitals like this one. So the next time you're at the beach and spot a protected area like this, think about the amazing sea turtles growing under the sand. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Hello to the 